Hey tubers, welcome back for another adventure. Looks like I got a turkey that's uh, cranky about something. First thing one wants to do when you get yourself an all-terrain vehicle, if you're thinking of buying one of these all-terrain vehicles, motorcycles, UTV, whatever, is you want to find the um, vehicle identification number on it. And you need that for a few reasons. First of all, you should get some paperwork when you um, when you buy something from somebody. And you should compare the vehicle identification number against that paperwork to make sure you're getting what you think you're getting, right? Um, different bikes put VIN numbers in different places. Generally speaking, Honda seems to like to put them, you know, along the front here. Right, um, Yamaha, in the case of this guy, they put it down low along the frame. And let's see if I can show you where it is. I think you guys could see it right there. So, that's the first thing you want to do, and you want to copy it, you want to be careful um, about what it is and so forth. You don't want to screw up any letters or anything, because that could cause you trouble later. Once you have the vehicle identification numbers, there's two spots in particular that are very, very important. The first digit and the tenth digit. My first digit is a J, my tenth digit is an S. And if you spend some time looking at a few websites and all that, it tells you that the J means this thing was made in Asia, and I thought it meant Japan. It may or may not, but it looks like J through R says Asia. Then you start on the numbers. This coding only starts working in 1980. I don't know if the numbers were not uniform before that or what the story was, but from 1980 and forward, and you go A, B, C, D, and so forth um, from 1980. Y is um, 2000, and 1 starts 2001. And then you can see um, 9 is 2009, and then it starts at the A, B, C again. So if you have an A there, and you look at a vehicle, it can either be a 2010 or a 1980. Chances are there's enough of a difference. When I look at my truck, I can pretty quickly figure out it's a 2015 and compare that against, you, you know, something old like the uh, Ranger out there is a uh, is a 96 anyhow um, and there's you can you can put all kind of finders um, and, and figure out what what your number is by checking uh, the internet uh, two letters they kind of um, don't use in this little scheme of things or um, they don't use O and they don't use Q and they don't seem to use I other either so you can either start from the from in my case it's easy to go backwards so um, on the alphabet and when you do that in my case it's an S or if you look at my truck out there and you figure out it's a T and it's a 96, you go one before that. And this thing has an S there, which makes this thing a 1995. So this is a pretty old quad. I mean, we can look at other numbers if you wish, but I think, I think you guys have it more or less sorted. Um... You should spend a few minutes to figure out where you, your VIN number is, once again, before you buy one of these. That way you can make sure that it's there, somebody hasn't filed it off. You could make sure for any paperwork they give you, it's correct. 
um, just in case it's a um, it's a hot quad uh, as now it's been in the Sun too long um, having a receipt with the VIN number on it works a lot better than if you walk up and say well I bought this green quad from so-and-so and you go see them and they say no I didn't sell you that quad I sold you the other green quad right prove what green quad they sold you and you're like no there were no other quads there was just this one right if there's no um, vehicle identification number it's a lot harder to prove that somebody sold you actually this quad so instead of a green quad I hope this helps um, remember when you're out there buying stuff though it is buyer beware and do take a look at everything and I was kind of surprised that this thing is uh, is that old, 1995. This is uh, this is uh, this is a tad older than I thought. Um, a lot of times having the uh, num the the VIN number, it's also necessary for getting parts. Definitely the year is necessary for getting parts. The exact year is kind of important. Some manufacturers have a tendency to change things from year to year. Even um, some of them have a tendency to change things um, almost by the date of manufacture. So be, be careful. Especially with the old stuff like this. Um, hopefully, when I'm looking for parts, they go from like 1993 to... Um, 1999 so if I buy something for a 95 and they're all inclusive I'm in pretty good shape where things get a little scarier is if you buy like a 19 something for 1995 and it's the first year sometimes in that first year they do interesting things I know on the Honda um, for the 85 um, 250 ES they did swap flywheels and stators um, in the middle of uh, 1985, toward the end of 85. So, if you have an 84, if you have an 85 uh, Big Red that was manufactured in 84, you definitely have the old stuff. If you have an um, 85 Big Red that was manufactured sometime in 85, it could kind of go either way with the with the different flywheels and different stators and it might not seem important until you buy a new flywheel and it's like oh man it doesn't fit over my stator or you buy a new stator and um, it, it's it's too small so you're not generating the power you're supposed to be and so forth um, so it's it's important to to, to realize some of this stuff um, I once again I ask on this thing if anybody knows anything about 1995 Kodiak 400s um, 4x4s anything cautionary or anything like oh man bulletproof machine I'd put that together and ride it for the rest of my life I'll, I'll you, you know I'll take whatever experience folks have to share with me um, okay, um, and by the way, these tur turtle covers, this is um, a great, great uh, use for them. They keep the engine nice and dry underneath there. I like, whenever I, I find these on the side of the road or whatever, I pick them up because they're like, uh, they're like a mini garage for your all-terrain vehicle. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching and commenting and subscribing. Please remember to keep your feet down, your heads up, and get out there and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.